Hey, welcome to part two of my DIY router rebuild. Uh, to start off with, uh, we are removing the old router carriage assembly, which includes the X drive motors and the uh, uh, Z axis uh, up and down motors, which are those two on the top there on the left and right. Uh, the router for the Z axis motion, the entire gantry was moving up and down. What I'm basically doing is converting it to a fixed gantry design and having the Z motion uh, being done on the new router carriage. Oh, here I'm loosening the x-axis chain so we can pull that out and uh, remove the router carriage. With the chain gone, the uh, obviously the carriage moves freely back and forth. And here comes the X-Drive motor coming off. That'll be removed and reused in the new carriage. And here I am unhooking the uh, router, the wiring uh, arm assembly. And there goes the old one. Oh, they're not easily seen, but I'm uh, removing the wiring from the old Z-axis assembly. And the new carriage. I'll slow it down for you a bit. A little bit of a highlight of how the cam system works on my new uh, design here. Just by twisting it, I can move it up and down uh, about three-eighths of an inch. All right, back to warp speed. Here I'm adjusting the uh, cams so it has a nice tight fit onto the uh, gantry there. And then tightening the uh, cammed uh, V-bearings. And attaching the uh, cable management arm to the new carriage. Attaching the router Z axis mount. And here we clamp in the uh, router into this new home. This is the gear reduction and drive assembly for the X-axis. Well, unlike most DIY routers, I've incorporated a uh, approximately 3.4 to 1 reduction uh, from the stepper motor uh, to the drive chain. Uh, this increases resolution on the router and also uh, you know, multiplies the torque by you know, 3, obviously. Uh, the assembly is uh, made up from some glued up uh, layers of uh, plywood. And then here we're uh, uh, installing the main sprockets and uh, shafting there, which is held in place by uh, 12 millimeter uh, ball bearings, which are press fit into that wood assembly. Now here I'm measuring the distance of the uh, sprocket off the faceplate there. Uh, those idler sprockets are just uh, ball bearing idler sprockets uh, already pre-bolted onto some 12, mm 12 millimeter bolts. And that's a press fit threaded into the uh, wood assembly there. And I added some glue to lock that in place after the, it adjusts, after the adjustment. Uh, the wood glue doesn't stick to the metal well enough to Probably lock it in place, but we'll keep it locked in place and then allow me to remove those in the future if I need to. And you make sure the uh, idlers are adjusted the same distance off of the uh, faceplate of the wood assembly as the uh, drive idler on the top. 
And here we are mounting the x-axis drive motor onto its uh, mounting plate. This is the uh, tension adjustment screw for the motor drive. It's just a uh, press fit T-nut with a uh, bolt in it. I added a little glue to uh, keep it, you know, fill in any voids and keep it stable. And now we are mounting the uh, motor assembly onto the carriage. It's uh, attached to the longer length threaded rods which were highlighted in the fifth, first assembly video. So that holds it behind the router carriage and behind the gantry. Uh, so here, uh, if you notice here, there were slots in the uh, motor assembly that allow me to uh, adjust that up and down in relation to the uh, chain which is visible there in the gantry. Uh, basically you want to get that as low as possible but uh, as low as possible but still have the idler wheels still still turn freely. And you'll see me uh, messing with that here shortly. Here I'm adjusting the uh, height of the assemblies so we have a free rotation on the chain. It's important that this does not cog on the chain as, uh, when you move it back and forth. Some further adjustments. Here I'm pulling the chain back so I can uh, pull it up and wrap it around uh, the drive pinion there on the top. And that's a 25 pitch chain, in case you're wondering. And it's held in place on the ends by uh, three millimeter uh, Allen bolts, which fit in nicely and they slide into the slots on the uh, wooden end pieces. And here I'm securing the other end and tensioning the chain. And testing the motion. On the other side, we're adding the, uh, this reduction chain here and tensioning it. So you want that tight so it's snug but not too tight where uh, it'll uh, make it hard for the motor to spin. Once the tension set, we tighten uh, all the nuts down. Okay, now we're into the Z-axis. Uh, this is the assembly that moves the router carriage up and down. And I'm attaching a, the uh, shaft coupling onto the motor. Uh, note that that is not a flexible shaft coupling, it's a solid adapter. That's a bit different than the normal when you uh, on CNC assemblies. mounting to the shaft. First some aluminum spacer, then we drop the uh, router assembly down, another spacer, and then we drop the uh, shaft coupling onto the uh, 10 millimeter uh, jack shaft there and it gets solidly attached. So in this design it's different than the typical CNC setup because the motor is uh, solidly attached to the uh, screw there. Uh, no, fl no flexible couplings. Uh, so basically the motor mount is the screw shaft and then I have those screws that come up and fit inside the uh, the plate on the motor which keeps the motor from spinning. So that gives me a uh, zero backlash connection and uh, allows the motor to spin nicely. Uh, no video of the wiring uh, but I did take some detail shots.
And that's it. If you like what you saw, like and subscribe. It'd be appreciated. Thanks for watching.